Welcome to Motohalo TV. I'm totally sure that many of you have already been confused these days by many different and contradicting informations regarding vehicle range and uh, energy consumption. Today I will show you a very simple and logic way how to relate the energy and the range. First, we need to start from the vehicle resistance diagram, like this one. It basically represents the force that is required to be applied to the vehicle to achieve certain speed. As you can see on the diagram, to achieve a 50 km an hour, we need to apply a force of 450 newtons. But before we move on, a few words how this diagram was created seems to be necessary. This kind of diagrams are built for every single individual vehicle, a vehicle type if you like. To explain you better what is that force that we need to apply to the vehicle, you can imagine a vehicle being towed by the other vehicle on the very long rope. A long rope because we need to avoid any wind turbulence influencing the vehicle that is on the other end of the rope. So the vehicle on the rope has turned off the engine and the, the transmission is in neutral position. So while it's being pulled at the different speeds, we need to measure the force that is in this rope. To imagine that we can, for instance, place in between a dynamometer, which is a device that measures the force. Basically, it is a spring with, a, with an arrow that shows, for instance, newtons. So, this is, of course, in, in theory, this is not the way to create an exact diagram. So, when we pull the vehicle at the speed of 50 km an hour, in this rope, we see the force of 450 newtons. So, measuring that theoretical force in this rope, at every given speed, for instance, starting from 5 km an hour and then 10, 15, 20, 25 until the, let's just say, 150 km an hour. We can note that force and this is the force that we see on the diagram. This is how we can imagine this diagram is being created. But once again, this kind of diagrams are made for every single type of the vehicle. This particular one was borrowed from one PhD dissertation and was created for one passenger light vehicle. A passenger light vehicle in understanding of 90s, which is something similar to Fiat Punta, let's just say. So this is how we get the, the, the required force to achieve a certain speed. But we also can calculate now very easily the power that is needed to achieve certain speed. Because as we know from the basic school, from the simple formula, that a power is a force multiplying speed. To be exact, a power is a force multi multiply distance divide on time. But distance divide on time is nothing else but speed. So when it comes to, for instance, 50 km an hour, and we know that we, our vehicle requires 450 newtons to be applied to achieve that speed. So we have 450 newtons multiply 50,000 meters and divide on 3,600 seconds, because one hour is 3,600 seconds. So out of this formula, we get 6.25 kilowatts and this is the the power of the of the engine that is required to achieve that speed which is 50 kilometers an hour in case of this particular vehicle and for 100 kilometers an hour for example we have 900 newtons required force and that gives us 25 kilowatts but we need to remember that 900 newtons is not related to 25 kilowatts. These two values are not related to each other. 
they are both related to the same curve on this diagram and this is how we need to understand it because for different vehicle we have we will have a different shape of the curve and then we will have a different power for for example for 900 newtons or different force for the same power okay so now we are ready to cross the required energy versus achievable range of the vehicle let's take as an example a battery with the capacity of 45 kilowatts hour for the speed of the 50 kilometers an hour we need 6.25 kilowatts of the power unit power to be delivered to the wheels to make it happen so now we can divide what we have which is 45 kilowatts hour in the in accumulated in the battery on 6.25 kilowatts that we need to achieve this speed it gives us 7.2 7.2 of what 7.2 of hours this battery in theory can deliver is able to deliver 6.25 kilowatts for the 7.2 hours now we need to understand what means the 45 kilowatts hour this in theory means that this particular battery can deliver 45 kilowatts for one hour or one kilowatt for 45 hours and this is an assumption made in favor of the battery because as we know the battery cannot deliver a full power to the very end until it's totally empty and of course we also know that we cannot discharge the battery 100% of the capacity that it, that it has because it is very bad for the for the for the battery but for this current purpose let's assume we can do that which is in favor of the of the battery of course so this is why we can divide available 45 kilowatts hour on 6.25 kilowatts that we need to achieve 50 kilometers an hour which gives us 7.2 hours which means that in theory this battery can deliver 6.25 kilowatts for 7.2 hours and with this speed 50 kilometers an hour being continued for 7.2 hours we will make a distance of 360 kilometers we need to keep in mind that this is for the constant speed without deceleration without acceleration and of course without climbing up the hill or going down the hill so we can make 360 kilometer with the speed of 50 kilometers an hour with that battery having available 45 kilowatts hour of energy on board so how would it look like for the speed of 100 kilometers an hour to achieve this speed as we know we require 900 newtons to be applied to the vehicle 900 newtons for this particular given curve of the movement resistance is 25 kilowatts so now the same way we divide available on board 45 kilowatts hour of energy on 25 kilowatts that is required to create a speed of the 100 kilometers an hour that gives us 1.8 1.8 hour when we travel with the speed of 100 kilometers an hour for the time of 1.8 hours we make 180 kilometers it is very simple to calculate and this is the distance we can make with this speed with this amount of the energy available on board after 180 kilometers the energy of the 45 kilowatts hour available on board is fully utilized this way of calculating is of course correct for any kind of vehicle powered by combustion engine powered by electrical engine powered by hydrogen engine now before we move on i need to remind you that this diagram was made for a very light passenger vehicle which means that it is not really relevant for the heavy electric vehicles 
because a heavier vehicle and a bigger vehicle would have a different diagram less favorable than, than the one that I took for my calculations. So the distances that I just showed you would be shorter in this case. But keeping this in mind, we reach the point when a simple question can be asked. So why this subject of available onboard energy versus a vehicle range is such an important when it comes to electric vehicles, but seems to not be really discussed when it comes to fossil fuel powered vehicles? The answer is very simple. In a current situation, an average lithium battery can accumulate 0.11 kilowatts hour per one kilogram of its mass, when the gasoline engine can generate 4.54 kilowatts hour of one kilogram of the gasoline. I need to highlight here that I don't take the energy accumulated in the gasoline, but in reality, being created by the gasoline engine, which we know that the gasoline engine has an efficiency about less than 30%. So we have one kilogram of gasoline that can be converted by the gasoline engine into the 4.54 kilowatts hour of energy. And on the other side, we have one kilogram of lithium battery that can be converted to 0.11 kilowatts hour of energy. The proportion is very simple, which is 1 to 40, as you can see here. So basically, a 7 kilograms of gasoline, which is 10 liters, equals about 280 kilograms of lithium battery. A 50 liters of gasoline, which is 35 kilograms, equals 1.4 tons of the lithium battery. Of course, we need to keep in mind that the progress is moving. But let's imagine, even if a new magic technology would be able to compress a double amount of the energy inside the lithium battery, it would still be 1 to 20. So even then, even if it was 1 to 20, it would be still way behind what we have now in the gasoline vehicles. And this is exactly why this subject seems to be very sensitive today. I hope you find this movie helpful. Thank you for watching.